let's continue learning data frames and now we'll see few other ways to create a data frame and some other uses of pandas library let's create a data frame from a dictionary this is our dictionary with keys years sales expenses and tax amounts these are just hypothetical numbers so please don't pay too much attention on the reasonableness of these amounts and i am saving this dictionary in a variable name financial data let me execute this command and our dictionary is ready now let's make a data frame from a dictionary name financial data I will save the new data frame into variable name financial data df. Df stands for data frame. Followed by equal sign, and I am telling Python that I am using pandas library that has this feature data frame. Please note that the Collab Jupyter Notebook is giving me autofill option to save typing, and in arguments I am providing dictionary name as a data source followed by a comma to give column names but let's ignore column names see how pandas data frame pick dictionary keys as column names let's run this cell so our new code is executed and create a new cell and print new data frame we just created to see how does it look and there you go now i want you to have a look at this column this is index column and you can see all index numbers similar to dictionaries data frame allow you to use different data types for indices not just the integers so let's recreate the same data frame from the same dictionary but this time using our desired indices names which is year 1 year 2 year 3 etc for 5 years like this let's run this code and print this is our new indices year 1 to year 5 but this does not look meaningful and professional the better way is to use actual years so in order to do that we will use financial data dictionaries years list so rather than typing each year we can save our time and effort by doing this way especially if you have long list of years let's run this command and print it but wait a minute we have a problem here year column is duplicated here this is because we provided the entire dictionary data in first argument and then we provided it again for using it as index as the result two year columns one as a column and one as index to avoid this duplication we can explicitly provide columns names using column argument and provide all columns except year as we are providing it in index like this let's execute this command and print it there you go a nice organized data frame and you can compare it with previous data frames that we created to see the difference you may have noticed it by now that i am going into small details in this topic and the good reason for that is data frame is going to be an integral part as a an accountant and analyst so my aim is to make you as much as possible comfortable dealing with this data structure data frame effectiveness become more visible when we read large csv or excel files and create a data frame from it with a simple one line command 
If the Jupyter Notebook installed and running from your computer, the command would be simple. Suppose I want to read this sales CSV file into Jupyter Notebook for analysis, which is currently sitting in my data folder. Python code will look like this. Library pandas followed by a dot read CSV function from pandas library and within the parentheses file path which is in my case data slash file name followed by file extension which is CSV all this in single quotes I am saving it in a variable df let me run this command and in next sale I will print it to see how it looks and this is our sales file in the notebook but in this course we are practicing using cloud based notebook which is Google Colab the easiest way to load a CSV file in Colab is using github file system if you are not familiar with github consider it as a web repository where the developers host their code files instead of the local file path in this case you will need a url to access the file i have uploaded the same file in my github repository accountants and if you like to use this file then go to my github page and go to the repo accountant you will see the same csv file click it and click raw in the address bar above copy the address and paste it in your notebook variable url in quotes i will provide this url link in the description and this time in parentheses you will need a variable that is address url and that's it there are 5000 rows and 14 columns in the dataset. It shows first 5 records and last 5 records as there are so many line items and can't fit in one window. It is squeezing it and indicating this by these 3 dots. That there is some data in the middle. Let's learn some data exploration using some techniques and methods available in pandas. I will start by viewing the first 10 records in the sales data by a head function. If you don't put number 10 in the parentheses, by default it will show only 5 records. Function tail shows us the last 10 records in the data set. Again, if we don't put anything in the parentheses, it will show us 5 records last five records now let's see names of all columns by simple command df dot columns now let's access one column by writing df open bracket close bracket quotes and within quotes our desired column name which is in this case item type and hit run again as 5000 rows in that column can't fit in the window it only showing us the first five and last five records you can see the repetition of the product names which is normal as a product can be sold more than once but let's say you want to see how many products are there in the data set without repetition that means we want to view unique products we can do this with a unique method like this data frame name df in brackets the column name that has all product names which is in this case item type please don't forget the quotes and outside of brackets a dot and method unique these are the name of products in the sales data now let's say you are interested to know the total number of products so either you count one by one in this result or encapsulate 
this entire code in the length function like this. And there are our total products. Data frame provide many options for selecting, subsetting and slicing a data set. Another useful technique is lock and i log. With lock and i log, you can do practically any data selection operation on data frames you can think of. Lock is label based, which means that you have to specify rows and column names or labels. I lock is integer index based, so you have to specify rows and columns by their integer index as we did in the lists. Now let's see a few examples of both, starting with lock. Suppose you are interested to see only one product record. Not like in the previous example where column name item type selected all products. So if you want to see one product, say serials, we can write the code starting with the data frame, which is df, followed by a dot as method notation, followed by method, which is lock and then open bracket close bracket and within brackets we have to tell python which column we are using which is item type double equal sign which is equality operator and not the assignment operator the double equal sign asks python to pull out all records from the item type if the item type or value is serial and there you go all records related to product or item type serial 